Thank you, Chair. Now we've got the royal headlines out of the session. Perhaps we can go back to uh, music streaming. Uh, in fact, I've been streaming during this session. I was quite insulted, Horatio, actually, when you were talking about uh, you know low users on Spotify not being as valuable consumers as people who just play it all the time. You know, as a Spotify customer, I find that very insulting. But I have been playing it during this session, and I started off playing uh, an artist that I like called John Smith, who's a very good singer-songwriter, British singer-songwriter played one of his uh, his albums, and now it's playing someone called Theon Regan, who I confess I've never heard of. Um, it's it's on mute, has been throughout the session. I hear this was a little experiment on my part. But, um, you know, doesn't that show, though? Um, well, actually, Paul, if I could come to you first. You said earlier on that the autoplay, which is what I'm, I'm featuring here by, by discussing that, that appears on streaming services uh, on Amazon, um, can easily be turned off. Was that a bit of a dig at the other um services or are they also they have those features as far as you know i don't know actually um you know, it, it wasn't intended as a dig that's for certain it was more intended about our focus on our customers which is what amazon always tries to do you know we i think we've always why, why is autoplay set by default like that so i'm um, playing something i didn't ask for well, again, you're on Spotify, so I'll let someone else give you the precise answer, but I'll tell you our answer. And as I said before, we're, we're lucky in streaming to have access to a lot of data, as in we have a lot of customers listening to lots of music, and that means we can measure the impact of these things. And we don't do these things and make them up and think that they might be good and leave them. We always okay. measure them, and we'll, we'll continue to okay. do that um, if, if and when um, it shows that people are enjoying it. Okay, I, I don't need a long answer on these. It's just a little opening skirmish. But Eleanor, what's your sort of response to that from Apple's point of view? Do you have it set by default, and is it easy to change? Uh, we do have it set by default. Uh, we only launched Autoplay very recently. I, I think it was towards the end of last year. Um, and yes, it can be changed easily um, okay. and turned off. The okay. the reason we did it was to make it a better consumer experience. And Horatio. just have to be Sorry, Alan. Yeah, it goes automatically into autoplay. Once again, it responds to activity on the part of the users if they skip uh, or change or, you know, essentially keeps adjusting uh, mm. all the time. But uh, it I've just, just left it on. We're on to Matthew, Matthew and the Atlas now on 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 mine. Um, how do I how do I switch it off if I don't like? Because I quite like playing a record, an album, and when it's finished, I'd like it to stop. How do I do that on Spotify? Um, you know, I'm quite sure there's a way to do it. I, I can't just the top of my head well, tell you. I can you write to us and tell us? Because I've been trying to work it out for ages uh, how to do that. And there's a serious point to my question, and that's that we were talking earlier about on about what you know, what is it? Is it a you know, is it a radio play? Is it a is it a sale? And and so on. And actually, I, I think I disagree with Steve Bryan. I think actually you gave three different answers. The uh, the three different um, witnesses. I think pretty much Horatio, you were giving the line that it's a sale effectively it's a making available right i think eleanor you were saying it's a license and i think paul was saying it was kind of a hybrid it's, it's just you're trying to fit a square peg into a round hole is that a, i mean you can you can is that an unfair um representation of, of what you each of you said you don't need a long answer but just is it an unfair representation horatio i i i can start i i, I... I don't think I was saying it was a sale. I was saying it was a new kind of thing. It was a sui generis kind of right. It is clearly a license from a from a contractual uh, perspective. And my point is like trying to equate it to a rent uh, to a, to a lease or a, a rental or a or a sale wasn't really quite adequate. Well, that, that's interesting because because uh, I you know I I felt perhaps you were pushing back slightly on it because uh, well. I mean, what you said was closer to what the record labels say, if I could put it that way, in response to the same question on the committee. And I know Spotify is still partially owned by one of the majors. Is, does that have any influence on the way that Spotify chooses to answer that question about what it is? Not, not at all. Um, okay. it, it is true that a couple of the labels own a very small, passive percentage of our equity, but, uh, but that doesn't influence the way we think about it. By the way, I did figure out how to turn off autoplay. Okay, you well you don't need to us. don't need to tell us now, but perhaps you could perhaps you could tell us later so that I don't use up all the committee's time on my own little personal problems. I was um, very proud of myself that I figured it out. Well I'm 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 amazed you're 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 a wiser man than me, Horatio. 
So um, can we um, move on to talking about the, the major rights holders who've appeared before the committee and um, play a big part in, in, in our inquiry? Um, it, it, have we established pretty much that, that about 80%, would you say, or 70%, what is the figure of music that's licensed to you that um, that customers you know listen to that comes from the major record labels? Would you say, Paul, have you got any idea of, of, of what the answer to that is? Sure, I, I'll give you give you two numbers here. I think for the overall using official chart company data for the overall UK market segment last year, a little over seventy five percent of streams came from major labels. Uh, okay. For Amazon Music, it was just a bit below that actually. So. Okay. Um, close to a percentage point below that okay and uh, eleanor and horatio what what are the figures for your companies i actually don't have that figure to hand I, okay what paul Perhaps. said sounds roughly roughly uh correct uh, for us as well but i i would have to double check okay. you can you can correct the record later later if there's any problem with that and and horatio uh, likewise i think roughly those numbers uh, uh sound right um i i will at the footnote that what you're seeing also is the number of content from independent uh, labels that is sort of breaking into the top most streams uh, uh, songs has been creeping up uh, mm. over the years quite significantly. But it's fair to say you wouldn't really have a business without the, the deals you've got to be able to use the music of the majors. Is that correct, Ratio? That that is correct. I think the combination of the catalogs of the certainly the three largest majors um, is uh, sort of an indispensable uh, component. Uh, and is service. is it fair to say that it's the majors that really require that revenue share model to be used that we talked about earlier on, where you know the money's put into one big pool, and which some artists have complained about. They think it's unfair. Some accountants we've heard of think it's inefficient you know, because of unattributable income and other things, digital breakage and so on. Managers and lawyers have told us that it lacks a certain amount of transparency because of non-disclosure agreements and so on. But is it fair to say, and I'll ask Horatio this question, that, that, it, that, that basically that revenue share model is used because that's what the major labels want to be used as a way of div divvying up the revenue? I mean, to be fair, um, historically, I, I don't know exactly how the revenue the ref share was was adopted. I know that that has become uh, the way uh, all the labels uh, do business, uh, which is not to say that if, if there were an alternative way of calculating revenue, you know, different players in the industry wouldn't be open to consider it. But obviously, I, I can't speak for the layers uh, for the labels. I I can only speak on the behalf of Spotify and say that yeah. we would be open minded about it. So I think we've established then that the, that none of the streaming services, that you'd all be fairly agnostic if there was a different um, means found to uh, to distribute the, the revenue as long as you've got your share, that, um, that, that, that the 30% that we've heard about that everybody seems to confirm is the figure, roughly. Um, is that correct, Paul? Yeah, I mean, I, I actually think that the time has come now for the, the UK industry to come together and to openly model and analyze what other distribution models could look like and, and Amazon would be willing and would actually be very keen to be part of that. Um, I think it's it's time that we did look at how other models might work. I think that some of those other models and not just the, the user-centric licensing that you talked about, perhaps also the artist growth model, which uses like a, a digressive scales approach that was proposed by the Association of Independent Music. We should take a look at a number of these approaches. They need to be modeled. We need to make decisions like this based on data and we need to really see what the uh, impact of applying that model en masse across a whole UK industry could okay. be. But we'd certainly be keen to see that modeling take okay. place. And just with short answers, perhaps, Eleanor and Horatio, would you both be willing to join in that endeavour? I, I, I think I'd have to come back to you with specifics, but in terms of joining in an endeavour and what that looks like. But but um, yes, I think it's certainly very interesting. And the key thing for us is that then that needs to be consensus among all licensors. Um, it, it's not a model that you can apply to, to some licensors and not to others. Um, so obviously the only way to, to reach consensus like that is to get together as an industry. And uh, Horatio, would you be willing to try some reform or have a look into it in that way? 
Uh, absolutely, we would be open-minded and be willing to explore and work with others on it. The, the one caveat, obviously, it has to be a model that works at scale. Uh, and, and also you have to understand that there's a good likelihood that whatever model is adopted would have to be viewed from the point of view of would a model like that work globally as opposed to creating just mm -hmm. unique variations of the model in different markets. Licensing the content on a global basis is, is a, 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 an incredibly large challenge as it is today. Um, so making sure that it's an efficient way of doing it um, and that can operate at scale would have to be one of the one of the key characteristics of it. But, but is the main obstacle to that at the moment the major's unwillingness to um, to to look at alternative models? To be fair, I, I'm not sure that I would say that. I, I I think it's a matter of getting, as Paul said, you know, people around the table and talking about it and analyzing, you know, whether artists in fact would fare better, where would it come from, what, what is the equitable distribution of these mm -hmm. things. You know, the, the market, it, it, just keep in mind, the market is already at play. There is disruption in the market, uh, competition that is uh, happening in the label space where there's a whole new breed of, of label services companies and digital distributors and others that are in real time challenging the economic okay. model of the major labels. Okay, and, so, and, and you, you, have, you have pointed that out. And, and in fairness, I think Universal said they might be interested in this. There, uh, David Joseph, when he's in front of us, indicated they might be interested. Um, it'll be interesting to see if the others will, will join in. Um, when, when the chief executive of Warner appeared before us, he, he described publishing as secondary rights. Um, I always thought the song came first, but there we are. But he described it as secondary rights. Is that the way it works, that, that, that when Warner Music negotiate their rights with you, they, they basically get the first slice of the pie and publishing sort of takes what's ever left? Is that, is that the process? So in effect, if Warner knows you'll pay out 70% of your revenue, they take 55%, you can only give 15% to publishing. Is, is, is that correct, Horatio? Well, we, we actually negotiate our agreements with two different entities, with Warner Chapel on the one hand on the publishing side and with Warner Music on the other hand side. That's... For the most part, the people who are involved are different. And even the right. people on our side are different in those negotiations. But they're from the same corporation, essentially, yes, they aren't are. they? Yeah. yeah. You, and, you, and just you, to confirm, sorry, it's already cut across you, just to confirm, I think you did say earlier on 15% is the figure, isn't it, in the UK for publishing with Spotify? I think that's probably a, a, a global rough figure. I, I think that would be consistent with testimony that I've, that I've heard has been offered in the context of these hearings okay. um, in the last few weeks. Do you know what the figure is? N not right off the top of my head. This is something that could be calculated. But, but it's, it's, it's <clears throat> well, 15% is the figure that, that perhaps you'd be able to, to tell the committee that. Um, what about with um, Eleanor, with with um, with Apple, and Paul with Amazon, as far as the publishing goes? Shall I go first? The the it's certainly not the way we've ever uh, sort of set things up. We've never gone, you know, hey labels, how much do you want, and whatever's left goes to the publishers. Uh, from that point, um, you know, publishing is just as important, and um, you know, we we negotiate them separately. Uh, as with Horatio, we're generally negotiating with completely different people. Um, what percentage what goes, goes on, to publishing? That's something I'd rather provide you in writing uh, privately, if that's okay. You know, this is the commercial terms of, of agreements. Would it be fair to say, though, it's, a, it's in the ballpark of 15%? Yes. And Paul? Yeah, so of the 70% that we pay out, uh, somewhere between three quarters and four fifths goes to the label and, and the balance does go to publishers, which does put it in that about that ballpark, yes. Um, isn't it essentially the case that the, the power of the majors in all of this means that, that you have to operate a licensing model that suits them, which means that they really decide the broad value of all of these rights, um, you, you know, and, and how the streaming is divvied up. That's essentially what happens here, isn't it, Paul? 
Well, we joined this uh, market segment slightly later than others. It was an established model when we sought the licenses we needed to be able to to run Amazon Music, and that was the established model that was there at the time. Uh, so it's hard for me to comment on how it got to be that way and and who influenced it. Okay. Um, I think one of the issues in in the inquiry that's come up is the is the 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 suggestion that there's really a competition issue because of that major market power, um, uh, given that they 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 own both recording and and publishing rights, um, but some rights are more equal than others. It seems uh, you know within the within the music business, it, so that they favour those that have a propensity to add more to their profit than than other rights. Ultimately, obviously, your businesses are all based here on the creativity of the, the artists whose work appear in the platform. If this committee recommended and the government were to decide to create a legal framework that enabled the activities of companies like yours to benefit British artists, songwriters, performances and performers more equitably than at present, is that something that you would welcome? Horatio. As I said before, you know, I think we are supportive of any efforts that, you know, improve the, the equitable distribution of revenues uh, in the industry. So we would be well disposed to engage in a discussion to that effect. Okay, Eleanor. I mean, equitable is a very complex term because it could, it, reasonable people can disagree on what equitable means. So yes, we absolutely, absolutely happy for the discussion from our standpoint artists should be paid for their work creators should be paid for their work um and it's what we we strive to do every single day um so so absolutely happy to have any discussion on on what is and is not equitable okay. because it's not a straightforward question paul my, my focus on this would be around making this industry the, the uk music industry is sustainable for the very long term i think that does mean that we need to ensure that all parts of it be it streaming services record labels of all sizes artists musicians songwriters uh, can find a way to to earn money from it so i'd be supportive of anything that looks at different ways to ensure that was the case i'd like to do that for the long term i want this industry to be here in 50 years time it's been where i've spent all my working life and i, I do want to see it having a, a long vibrant future yeah, I just want to finish the couple of questions to to you, Horatio, because I was watching very closely what Daniel Eck was said yesterday at the Stream On uh, event, and one of the things he said was, uh, and I quote, "We have to be a lot more transparent than we've been before." What do you think he he meant by that, and what was he referring to? I, I think just in general, um, there are certain certain aspects of the of the market and the industry that that have a high degree of opacity where data is not really that as transparent and where companies are um you know uh, just taking advantage of of the lack of transparency that exists i think that you know we believe that because of the way streaming works that there is a lot more data that can flow uh, to the different actors in the industry, including uh, artists and, and and musicians, and that can be valuable uh, to them. Okay, and 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 Dawn Ostroff said, um, <clears throat> you know, in answer to that question, is Spotify like radio in a sense, which was what we had at the beginning of our session today. And I, I think you were knocking that one back a bit, Horatio, but she actually said, our, our job is sucking listeners away from radio. Mm -hmm. So uh, is, it, is, is that what Spotify's mission is, to suck listeners away from radio? If that's the case, shouldn't musicians who get equitable remuneration from radio plays be reasonably entitled to get equitable remuneration from streaming, particularly when it plays to you, as I demonstrated earlier, something um, based on an algorithm, something that, um, that I haven't necessarily asked for? Yeah, I don't think she quite said that we are like radio. I think what she said was that there, the market opportunity for us um, includes $30 billion of advertising revenue in the radio industry that we have the opportunity uh, to tap into by, you know, capitalizing on what's been the reality in video and in other parts, which is linear 
content services um, you know, tend to give way to more interactive content uh, services that highly personalized content services uh, like the one that we provide. So we think we can provide a, a, an audio content listening experience that is better than the radio listening experience for a user and if, take advantage of the advertising revenue that's there. And in doing that, so, obviously benefit. Uh, but if you're successful, if you're successful, Horatio, in reducing radio listens, you'll also be successful in reducing payment through equitable remuneration to musicians. Is it not an unreasonable point to make that if that mission does succeed, that that equitable remuneration, which currently goes to musicians from radio plays in the UK, should go to musicians through streaming plays? Yes, it's not going to happen overnight, okay. and, it, and there is no guarantees that it will happen uh, okay. uh, completely. Uh, but we expect that to see some of the same dynamics that we've seen in video, which is uh, as as dynamic content, personalized content listening on streaming platforms becomes better, um, people will want to leverage uh, that service as opposed to uh, okay. this radio offering. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you.